the chapter 3 lesson 1 video we're looking at scatter plots and correlation uh, I want you to keep in mind as you watch this video and you look through the outline uh, how much how can we determine how much of a correlation exists between two variables um, so right now would be a good time to go ahead and download the vocabulary and the outline in Schoology yourself so you can look on with this um, so let's start talking about scatter plots so at the bottom here you see a variety of scatter plots Scatter plots are just a point for an individual with two different variables measured. So we want to look to see if when we graph these two values for several individuals, we, um, if we get a clear pattern um, so that we can see that there's some sort of a trend or correlation. So that's what we mean by correlation. So you um, first, we're in the, on the x-axis we have our explanatory variable, on the y-axis we have our response variable. So if we think one might be a cause of the other changing, so in a direct relationship uh, the explanatory goes up, the response goes up, in an inverse relationship the explanatory goes up and the response goes down, or, or they tend to, uh, then we're going to measure how, how well that pattern fits, and that's really our goal here. Like, how strong is that correlation, if there is any? And we can quantify that. So we're going to look at four qualities of scatter plots. The direction, so what's the overall trend? Does it look like it's going uphill from left to right? So that would be positive, a direct correlation. Or does it look like it's going uh, downhill from left to right, from upper left to lower right, as in here, which would be a negative correlation or a potential inverse relationship. Uh, the form, does it appear to be linear or a curve? So if it looks like we have a curve, then what we're going to be doing for linear regression coming up in lesson two isn't going to work out because uh, it's linear regression so we're looking to have a line uh, the formula for a line based on the trend the strength so how closely are uh, do the points follow that clear form if they followed it perfectly they'd be on the line if they had if they if it was weak um, if there's no correlation there would be just a scattering of points if, as they get closer to the line, the strength uh, gets stronger. And outliers. Do there seem to be any points that are outliers in the overall pattern? So we measure the correlation um, with a value of R. R is going to go from negative 1, where we have um, all of our points on a line going from upper left to lower right, to positive 1, where we have all of our points on a line going from lower left to upper right, or a positive slope. So the value of R tells us whether it's positive or negative, so the direction, and it tells us the strength. So this value of R is going to be really helpful for two of those, um, two of those aspects. The form, if it's linear or curved, is something that we're going to have to look for the overall pattern just by uh, graphing the scatter plot. And for outliers, you're going to have to eyeball that too, looking at your scatter plots. So over here for old faithful eruptions we have a positive correlation. The trend line is uh, has a positive slope from lower left to upper right. Here we have a negative correlation, upper left to lower right, or an, a potential inverse relationship, while this is a direct relationship. And here we have a scatter plot that has a value of r close to zero. A value of r close to zero, zero would indicate no correlation, that they don't seem to have a clear pattern that they go together. So a positive association would be a positive value of R, and that means above average values of our explanatory variable are accompanied by above average values of our response variable. Now keep in mind that correlation is not causation. So just because we have a strong correlation doesn't mean the explanatory caused the response. There could be a lurking variable, something else causing them both to change. Um, so positive association, above average values of one variable accompanied above average of the second. Negative, above average values of one variable, accompany lower than average values of a second variable, or an inverse relationship. So here are the key aspects to remember about R. It gives us the direction and strength of the linear relationship between two variables. We also call that the correlation. It's always between negative 1 and 1. It cannot get smaller than negative 1 or bigger than 1, because that would be uh, a perfect line, perfectly correlated. When r is less than zero, it's negative association. Um, so that'd be an inverse relationship. Values close to negative one make it stronger. Values closer to zero make it a weaker relationship. And I'll go ahead and define how what is strong and what is weak 
as we go in class. When r is 0, there's no association. When r is greater than 0, there's a positive association. As it gets closer to 1, there's a stronger positive association or correlation. So here are some examples there. Here's no clear pattern. Here's a weak negative pattern. Here's um, a, a moderate positive pattern. R is 0.5. R is negative 0.7. We can see more of a linear pattern, pattern emerging, although it looks like a thick line, so some values are kind of far. A positive association, so R is 0.9. We tend to see more and more of a fit. R is negative 0.99. You can see that this is a strong negative association. Looks like an inverse relationship. Values are all pretty close to the to our best fit line or our regression line. So what you can think of R as is it's looking really at like the standard deviation of the line. We want to minimize the distance from our line to each of the points. So in the y direction, in the vertical direction, we want the smallest distance from each point to the line. So the line is like the average of all the values. So you could think of our best fit line, our regression line, as being the average of all the points, the average of all the x's and the average of all the y's as it moves down. And the, the closer they are to the line, the small we call that a smaller residual, meaning um, our points are closer to the line, they're not further away from our prediction. So this is how it's calculated. Um, and honestly, on this one, we're never going to calculate it by hand because it's really tedious. You can see from this long formula for calculating R. We're going to talk about some facts on how to do it. However, it's keep in mind this summary formula down here. This is also in your book um, that you're subtracting a value from the mean dividing by the standard error of that. So correlation ignores the distinction between explanatory and response variables. If we switch them, we would still have a correlation. The value of R is not affected by the changes in the unit of measurement of either variable. So if we went from centimeters to meters, pounds to newtons, uh, correlation is not resistant. So outliers can greatly change the value of R in the same way that outliers change the value of the mean and the standard deviation of a distribution. You can't have categorical variables. And this is one problem that a lot of people ran into looking for data for their project for chapter three. We have to have quantitative variables because we have to be able to graph both in order to do in order to calculate correlation. Um, and then use R with caution when outliers are included. Sometimes what we might do is calculate R including the outlier and then calculate it without including the outlier. Perhaps the, error, uh, perhaps the outlier is due to human error or something else. But maybe the outlier can tell us some useful information about something else that's going on. Maybe there's a variable we're not accounting for. So we don't always just want to discount every outlier because outliers can also be important and give us important information. And finally, correlation is not a complete summary of uh, two variable data. You should always include the mean and standard deviation of each data set to summarize where that data is. And here is your multiple choice question. Uh, it's pretty basic because we're going to get into calculating this and using our calculator. It'd be a good idea to look at the calculator functions too now for calculating R. We're going to have a lot of calculator functions in this chapter, so I'm going to make a little video of how to get everything graphed and calculate residuals. So um, based on this graph, Go ahead and pause and answer the multiple choice question. I'm asking about the association and the value of R. Uh, please also go through and read the lesson summary. Look over some examples in 3.1 and look over the vocabulary posted in Schoology. And finally, our guiding question is how can we determine how much of a correlation exists between two variables? Also comment on how you're going to incorporate what we're learning here into your project based on the data that you already have for chapter 3.